Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is your 13th lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we learned about the purpose of the body canvas. In today's lesson, I'd like to talk you through the specific canvas construction that we're going to use for the Pagoda model. What's really important to understand here is that every style, material, figuration, fit requires its own construction. We can't just use one construction for everything. That's just not going to happen. So when we are designing the construction of our canvas, we have to consider the aesthetics, the body of the person we're making things for, the material and all of that together to get proper results. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to explain to you the construction that we're going to use for our model and why. That should help you with your evaluation as you're continuing forwards during this process. You ready? Let's go. Okay, this is going to be exciting, but if you're looking at these lines and you're thinking, what the hell am I looking at? I highly, highly, highly recommend you either make our traditional model first or at least watch the lesson in which I explained the construction theory of the canvas so that you can look at this with ease and don't get confused, okay? So let's get into it. First of all, what do these lines represent? The white lines represent our fabric forepart and our side body panel. The reason why I've dotted lines here on the side body panel is because it's not that important. So don't think that it's something special other than the forepart. The wide white lines represent the inlay that we have added to our pattern on the fabric. Every time we are making our canvases, we use the fabric that's cut out with the inlay. The orange lines represent the body canvas. It goes all around right here, extends into the armhole and goes towards the sides. Then we have the blue lines. Those represent the horse hair, the chest canvas. You may say the chest hair. And then we have an extra piece of horse hair that's indicated by the yellow lines in the shoulder area. And last but not least, we have the purple lines that represent Cilicia. So what do they stand for and what are these lines representing? Let's begin with the body canvas. That's the orange line. So the body canvas is simply a duplicate of the forepart. As you can see, it follows the contours. There is a little bit of an addition all around, all the way to the side, for the exception of the side right here and the shoulder area, because we are going to have a seam that separates the shoulder from the body. The first thing to mention is that the grain of the body canvas is exactly as the same grain as the fabric forepart. However, we have a separated piece here which has the grain on the bias. Now for the traditional model I've already explained that we usually have a wedge there which opens up and kind of like follows the contours of our body. However on a pagoda model we're not going to have a wedge. We are going to put that piece on the bias so that we can stretch out the shoulder and the armhole area to create a concave upwards and a concave forwards effect on the surface of our canvas. Therefore, we have that seam that separates the shoulder from the body. If you look at the side, we have this extended piece into the side body. Why do we have that there? Well, we want to emphasize the hip curve a little bit more since this is a very stylized garment and therefore we need something behind the hips or at least around the hips to really give that a bit more volume and structure. And the extension of the body canvas into the sides does exactly that. We will have a seam, as you can see, zigzagged right behind the underarm seam. And the grain of that extension is exactly the same grain as we have on our fabric piece. Then we have an extension, which we call a wing extension, going from the armhole into the side body side, into the back side, and then stopping right on top of the shoulder. Sometimes this piece is cut separately and added as a pad, and then it's called a wing pad. But ours is going to be a canvas extension along with the domet. The grain of that piece is also cut on the bias. Why? Well, 
if you are having a wide strip of material around your armhole, you really want that material to be flexible because that's where you have most of the movement. If it's cut on the straight grain, it may restrict you and feel a bit more uncomfortable as if someone is kind of like holding your shoulders, which is of course not so nice. So that's that. The purpose of this piece, by the way, is to not only fill out the back side and the side body side a little bit for a smoother look, but also since we're going to use a more rigid um, sleeve head wadding around the sleeves, we need something to hold that area really well because otherwise the sleeve head is just going to flip back and distort the backside. You'll see all of that in action when we get to it. This is just the theory. So that's the body canvas explained. Let's talk about the chest hair represented by the blue line. Horse hair around the armhole and the shoulder also follows the exact same shape outline of the body canvas but here at the bottom it's cut straight going towards the brake line but ends behind it and goes all the way up to the shoulder again behind the brake line not on it however there is something about the horse hair that's very different than the conventional way of doing things the horse hair is positioned so that the grain, the horsehair grain, the strongest weave of the, of the material, is placed diagonally, basically on the bias. Why do we do that? Well, we have already separated the shoulder piece on the body canvas, the orange lines, and have positioned that on the bias so that we can stretch it out. If we would cut the horsehair so that the strongest weave, that's the horizontal weave runs across the chest in a straight line we would also have to cut an extra piece for the shoulders and then machine that up and it's just going to be an unnecessary process so what we do is we cut the horsehair on the bias so that the shoulder is already on the bias but also since we are making a pagoda model which is a highly stylized garment the diagonal positioning of the horse hair will make the side of the forepart slightly weaker and it's going to allow it to collapse in a hollow form. The traditional model would emphasize the sides of the chest and create a round chest whereas this creates a hollow chest and a bit more athletic form. So therefore we cut the horse hair in one piece on the bias. Okay? Then we have an additional piece of horse hair indicated by the yellow lines which is also cut on the bias, but this time the strongest weave is not going upwards, is going downwards. Why is it going downwards? Well, there is a reason for it. First of all, having the strong weave of the horsehair going upwards, which we have on the blue piece, will push the shoulders of the garment upwards and backwards. That's not something that we want, because why? our shoulders are moving forwards and downwards, if anything. So we would like to encourage the garment to collapse in that direction. This piece, this yellow extra piece, has the strongest grain, therefore going downwards, so that it first neutralizes the upwards pushing that the blue piece does, but also adds an extra layer, which makes that area a bit more firm and gives a sharper shoulder line for this highly stylized model so that's that that's the yellow piece last but not least we have the purple piece which represents Celicia. that piece is also cut on the bias and it's sandwiched between the body canvas and the horsehair so it's between them what's the purpose of this piece well when we are going to pad our canvases we are going to pad this area in the opposite direction that it would normally go. So normally it goes around our body. So you would think, let's pad it in this direction. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to pad it, holding it in the opposite direction, away from the body. What does that do? Well, it creates a very stiff and hollow area around the sides. When that is forced to go around the body, it creates a flat and hollow surface around the chest and then has a lever effect. It pushes the remainder soft part of the chest forwards. It gives a very elegant and athletic look. So it's hollow on the sides and the chest is on the front. Compared to the traditional model, 
which had the chest going kind of like emphasized on the side and be very round. This one has all the chest concentrated on the front and keeps the sides flat and hollow. So as you can see, there is a lot going on. So I still highly recommend you go back to the traditional lesson, watch that or at least make the canvas and then come back and move your way upwards to this advanced model. All the combination of all these elements together is going to allow us to create a highly stylized garment as the pagoda model. Now you might be wondering, hey, aren't we going to use Domet in the construction of our canvas? Yes, we are. The reason why I didn't mention Domet is that I want you to focus on the main players. That's the body canvas and the horsehair. Those are the materials that actually have a role to play in the whole outcome of the style and the aesthetic of the garment. Domet is just there to cover up the horsehair. That's all. Also, if you're thinking, hey, aren't we going to have all these darts in our canvas? What about them? Yes, we are going to have darts in our canvas. However, before we go ahead and put darts in our canvas, I want you to have a deep understanding about darts. So in the next lesson, I'm going to unpack everything about darts so that by the time we're making the canvas and putting them in the canvas, you have all the understanding about them that there needs to be. Also, since we've been talking about all these materials, I can understand that depending on your location, it's very difficult for you to source body canvas, horsehair, domed, all these things. So to make things easier and a lot more practical for you, we have put together two bundles. The first bundle is called the foundation bundle with which you'll be making the traditional model. The second bundle is called the improvers bundle with which you'll be making the pagoda model. Those bundles will have all the materials that I use in the lessons so that you can work with me without being worried about what is this result going to be depending on the material that I'm going to be using. You know, it's so difficult to source from one supplier, then from the other, then go to that shop, then that's out of stock. All of that will be together for you. So how can you purchase these bundles? Simply click on the link in the description of this video. That should take you to our website and there you can treat yourself to one of these bundles. Remember, you're not just investing in materials, but also the bright future ahead of you. My name is Reza, this was today's lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. You ready? Let's go!